If you're eligible for CRB, you can receive $1,000, nine hundred dollars after tax withhold for two weeks. What's up guys, how's it going? It's your boy Umar Khan here with a new video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the after serve. So, CERB is transitioning into new benefits and there's a bunch of things going on. And before we get started, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This channel is all about self-help, personal development, real estate, and content like this. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit a like, drop a comment if you have any questions below, and I'll make sure to get back to everyone. So let's jump into the video. So, uh, I feel free to follow along. It's all on the website here, I'll put the link below. Uh, but essentially, the government of Canada put out this, um, this article, after CERB transitioning to new benefits. Okay, so the Canada Emergency Response Benefits ends uh, when you've reached the 28 weeks of benefits or on October 3rd, whichever comes first. And then anybody who's eligible could still get retro paid. So if you don't know what that means, that means if you have, like, it essentially ends after 28 weeks or October 3rd. But let's just say you didn't apply for the first few weeks and you were eligible, you can still get retro paid for that. Um, but going forward, it, it, it's closed. So there's a couple of different things that are happening. Um, so CERB, like the CERB is officially transitioning to EI, employment insurance. So if you were laid off due to COVID related um, layoffs, like your job just shut down or they need to do cutbacks and laid you off, then you'll be automatically transitioned into EI. And if, for those of you that don't know or are confused what EI is, essentially if you look at one of your pay stubs, every month you're paying a percentage to the government, securing your, it's like your, your employment insurance, you'll be able to withdraw funds like that. And the calculation is a little bit tricky. Uh, from the best of my knowledge, it's either 50 or 60% of your income. So if you're making a thousand bucks a week, you'd be getting 600 bucks a week. Uh, or it could be 500, it could be 400, it really depends on um, exactly how the calculation is made. So then the website goes on saying if you need financial assistance after CERB, what you could do, you could uh, essentially uh, enroll into the EI benefits, uh, which would be affected for one year. So you got that, that 52 weeks of uh, EI coverage. Okay, but now there's some new recovery benefits, like for those people who may not qualify for EI, um, they have some new benefits here. They got the Canada Recovery Benefit to so the new CRB. The Canada Recovery Benefit will provide eligible workers with $500 per week, taxable, tax deducted at source, for up to 26 weeks of those who have stopped working and who are not eligible for EI, or had their employment slash self-employment income reduced to at least 50% due to the COVID-19. This benefit will be paid in two week periods. So essentially, uh, they still got us at $500 a week, and this is good because this is for EI workers. And then when it says you're not eligible for EI, that basically means maybe you're not laid off. Maybe your hours have just been reduced significantly. Like it's, in this case, it's saying 50%, at least 50% reduced. Your hours are reduced 50%, then you can enroll in these benefits as well. And you'd be getting that $500 bi-weekly. I don't see it here just yet, but from, what I, from the best of my knowledge, I heard that they're going to tax it. So they withhold 10%, but let's keep going and we may see that. So Canada Recovery Benefits. The Canada Recovery Benefits gives income support to employment and self-employed individuals who are directly affected by COVID-19 and are not entitled to employment in insurance benefits. The CRB is administered by Canada Revenue Agency. If you're eligible for CRB, you can receive $1,000, $900 after tax withhold for a two-week period. So that's it. So they are holding about 10% back, which is good. The government's watching out for you because if you don't budget this and you, you know, you're not good with your, your money management, which you should get on top of if you're watching this channel, but let's just say you're not, you know, your bills are piling up. Um, if you were to spend it all when it comes tax time and Uncle Sam comes to collect, it might be really hard because you'd be really, really behind. So the government's kind of watching your back here. I don't know, what do you think? You think the government should withhold or not? My personal opinion, I think the withhold would be smart because a lot of people aren't on top of their finances and they're not putting money aside. Uh, but really, what do you guys think? Comment down below. If your situation continues past two weeks, you will need to you will need to apply again. You may apply up to a total of 13 eligible periods, 26 weeks, between September 27th, 2020, and September 25th, 2021. Okay, so they're basically extending the serve till September 2021, and it's cool. Every two weeks, you'll have to apply again, just in case your work status changes. And if you're confused on what, what that means is, let's just say you're in a case where you work a job and your hours were cut about 50%. So you used to work 40 hours, now you're only working 20, and then you're applying for CERB. 
but then one week they had extra hours and they give you 30 hours and you're no longer at that 50 period mark. Instead of you taking the serve and then you're gonna have to pay them back, they're gonna find out, you're gonna get fined. The government's making sure that you apply every two weeks to make sure you're eligible. That's kind of how EI works too. If any of you were on EI before, um, every week you have to log in, or I think it's every month. But you basically log in before you get paid. So that's pretty good because again, a lot of people, like when you're on CERB, they're just getting a paycheck automatically. And it could, you know, it's not that it's dangerous, but if you're not eligible and you're taking the money, they're gonna want it back and they might want it back with interest, which we don't have too much information on. So now it goes into sections. Who can apply uh, eligible criteria for CIB? So the eligible criteria for the CIB, CRB would be uh, you're not working for reasons related to COVID or you've had 50% reduction in your average weekly income. So that's that's one. You did not apply for, oh, you did not apply for or receive the following. So you didn't receive the Canada uh, Recovery Sickness Benefits. You haven't received the Canada Recovery Caregiver Benefits, Short-Term Disability Benefits, Workers' Compensation Benefits, Employment Insurance, Quebec Parental Insurance Plan. So for you to qualify for the, the new CRB, you, can, you couldn't have received any of the following, right? Uh, you were eligible, you were not eligible for EI. So you can't be, if you're eligible for EI, you gotta go EI route. You can't take the CRB. Uh, but if you're not eligible for EI, then you get, okay? You have to reside in Canada, uh, which basically means you've lived and you, you have a home in Canada. And, uh, but you don't have to be a citizen or a permanent, wait, you live in and have a home in Canada, but you do not have to be a citizen. Cool. So if you're, if you're, if you're not a citizen or a permanent resident, but you're living here in Canada, then essentially you're covered. If you qualify for the other stuff we covered so far, uh, you must have been present in Canada. You had to be at least 15 years or older. You have to have a valid social insurance number. Okay. So if you're back to resident or permanent resident status, you have to have a social insurance number. I'm not too sure on how that works for um, for people coming to the country, but I'm pretty sure you need a work permit or some sort of permit to get a, a social insurance number. The next criteria is you've earned at least $5,000 in 2019, 2020, or in the 12 months before the date you applied for the following sources, employment. Um, so basically employment income, so total gross pay uh, before tax deductions, uh, or net self-employed income. So if you're self-employed and you're applying for the CERB, you obviously wouldn't be applied, uh, you can't go for EI, but you have to have made $5,000 in your self-employed. And um, for those of you who are self-employed, you guys already, already know, but if you're a little confused on those who are not self-employed, essentially the way the tax system works is when you earn income, uh, when you're self-employed, you have to show it to the government and then you pay tax after, versus when you have a job, your job will cut it out before. So that's something to know, make sure that you've had paid, you had $5,000 on your, on your T4 last year. Okay, and then the next qualification is you have not quit your job or reduced hours voluntarily on or after September 27, 2020. So basically, you kind of quit, your, you kind of like, because you're afraid of the COVID, you kind of said, I don't want to work. They, they have to have took you off the schedule. If you voluntarily quit your job on or after September 27, 2020, you are not eligible to receive CRB. So you guys gotta be careful for that. So basically you'd have to be seeking work. You can't just be, you know, you're just chilling. Like it has to be COVID related. It even has some other uh, details here uh, about provincial course uh, exemptions. Uh, if you attended a course, program or training referred to you by the provincial government or a provincial body during the two week period, you may be eligible for CRB uh, if you also meet all the other eligible criteria. I'm guessing provincial course is something like uh, again, I don't know, I'm not going to leave a comment there. Um, you may work while you're receiving CRB. So you may earn employment or self-employment income while you receive CRB, but the CRB has an income threshold of $38,000. You will have to reimburse 50 cents for every dollar of net income you earned above $38,000 on your income tax return for that year, 2020 or 2021. You will not have to pay back more than your benefit amount that year. We encourage you to consult um, Job Bank, Canada's National Empo Employment Service that offers tools to help you with your job search. So yeah, they're giving you some resources there um, and telling you basically you're gonna be paying 50 cents on the dollar for anything past $38,000 if you're still working and receiving CRB at the same time. You have not turned down re reasonable work during the two week period uh, when you're applying. Uh, if, you if you refuse reasonable work, you will automatically lose five periods of CRB. Um, sorry, you'll lose five periods, so 10 weeks of CRB, eligible periods, 
Um, you also may have to wait five periods, so 10 weeks before you can reapply if you receive work again, and you'll face the penalty again. Again, yeah. So if, you, if you're receiving work, you gotta go to work, right? Um, otherwise you're gonna qualify. If they may not find out now, but if they find out later, it might get you in a sticky situation. You guys gotta understand, the government typically does not hand out things for free. And when they do, they're probably going to be really hard on how to take it back. I don't think we've experienced something like this before. The government just handing out cash like this. So you got to be really careful because it's calculated. Um, they're going to definitely want their money back one way or another. If that's by through increasing taxes or penalties or I don't know how they're going to do it. But be sure they're going to want it back. Not to scare you. Please take this serve. We encourage like, um, not encourage, but you know, if you need it, take it, right? Um, but remember... If you don't need it, you try to, you know, just collect just cause, it, it might be, you know, um, a little great. And obviously, this is not financial advice, this is more so for entertainment purposes and just so we can go through this together versus you reading this alone getting bored. Um, but consult a financial expert, guys, like a, like a, someone who does your taxes um, because, you know, you, you may not be qual you may or may not be legible and you'd want a financial expert to, to guide you through that. And then they also have a verify your legibility tool here. Um, they got like programs and stuff, all right? And then how much can you get? Uh, so basically you're getting a thousand bucks every two weeks and they'll automatically have 10% tax uh, de deduction. So you're getting $900 every two weeks. And then also has some, some other tabs here, impact on your taxes. Impact on your taxes. The 10% tax withhold at source may not be all the tax you need to pay. When you complete your personal income tax return, you may need to pay more or less depending on how much income you earn. You must report to the CRB payment that you received as income when you file your personal income tax return. Uh, the 10% withhold may not be the be all end all. Either maybe you didn't earn enough income so you shouldn't pay the 10% so you'll get that return to you. But if you earn more than I guess the 38,000, you're gonna have to pay more back. So again, I was saying earlier about how it's nice you don't need to withhold money. I would still be conservative with that money because like I said, the government's gonna to wanna to take their money back one way or another. Not to create fear, but just keep in mind, you know, let's be responsible adults here. And if you're watching this video, I'm sure you, you, you want to know the information. So I'm here to deliver the information from straight from the website, but also my personal opinion. Uh, just, you know, so you could uh, kind of get that in input, okay? How your income affects what you keep. So now it's discussing how your income is going to affect on how much money you'll be keeping. It said this earlier too, but if you're earning above $30,000, every 50 cents, you'll have to reimburse 50 cents for every dollar of income above $30,000. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you are earning, if your net income is less than 30,000, you will not have to, to reimburse the CRB. Okay, and then periods you can apply for. And it's a two week period, kind of like how CERB was. And it's from period one would be September 27th to October 10th. Um, and then so on and so forth, right? Uh, they also will do retro pay. So if you were to apply a little later, you can still retro pay for that week if you were eligible. Uh, your eligibility ends after 13 periods. You can no longer receive CRB payments after you've reached a maximum of 13 periods, 26 weeks. The benefit is available between September 27th and 20, uh, 2020 and September 25th, 2021. So you can have a maximum of uh, 13 periods, which would be 26 weeks, and then they would stop. Okay, and then how to apply. First, you gotta um, confirm your legibility. Uh, you have to confirm your register with the CRA. So if you ever done your taxes before, you, you know, you're good to go. If you applied for the, the CERB or the student's benefits before, I think it, it already, you'd already be set up with them. But if you haven't, you have to make sure you, you file your taxes or sign in with Service Canada. Again, speak to a tax expert and they'll be help you out with that. You gotta set up a direct deposit. Uh, payment which would take about three to five days. If you don't and you take a check, it will take ah, it will take 10 to 12 business days. Applications will be opening October 13th, 2020. We mentioned this already, but you'll have to apply every two weeks. You'll have to, to redo it. So keep uh, keep uh, getting your payments every two week basis. You'll either sign in or call in. Okay, now this next tab, return a payment. Okay, so this is interesting because you know you may have accidentally took a payment that you weren't qualified, that you sorry, you weren't eligible for, it, so you may want to return it. Let's see what they have to say here. Your situation may have changed since you first applied, or you may have received a mistake, or you may have made a mistake when applying. 
If you are not eligible for the benefits, you will have to return any payments you receive. We encourage you to return any payment you receive in 2020 that you're not eligible for before December 13, 2020. So, there, again guys, if there, this is on the website for everybody to find, right? And if you're applying for SERP, you should definitely go, you should, you should read it, like anything. If you sign up for a contract, read it, find out what, like, what, like, what's happening. Uh, but if they're telling you here, if you received anything in 2020 that you're not eligible for, and they're asking you to return it back in December 2020, that might be your free card right now, your get out of jail free card. It might be smart, speak to tax expert, find out if you, had, if you weren't eligible and if you should pay it back, because if they're saying, asking you, giving you a deadline, that means there might be penalties after. Again, this is just speculation that I'm making here, but just, you know, kind of common sense too. They're giving you a deadline, they're telling you, that means that they might have a way to check, and if you're not eligible, I would hate to see somebody have to get a penalty for money that they received that they didn't even need. So it almost be like, instead of you getting free money, you're given, like you're giving the government free money. So think about that, speak to tax expert. You must return or repay CRB to CRA if you are, uh, if you've applied for CRB and, found, and later found out you're not eligible, you received a payment in error, you received one of the following for the same eligible period. Canada Recovery Caregiver Benefit, Canada Recovery Sick Benefit, Short-Term Disability Benefit, Workers' Compensation Benefit, Employment Insurance, Quebec Parental Insurance Plan. Uh, are found to have made a fraudulent claim, right? Which again, the that gray area. Now they say individuals who make intentionally fraudulent claims may also face additional consequences such as penalties or possible jail time. Which would be, I mean, that'd be horrible. You go to jail for taking 2,000 bucks, it's not worth it. Uh, but again, guys, um, speak to tax expert, find out. If you don't know if you're legible or not, find out. You know, it kind of gives you a good criteria here. Uh, but now, how to return the C CRB to the CRA? If you return or repay a CRB payment to the CRA online or by mail, um, you, you sorry, you can return or repay a CRB payment online or by mail. So that's pretty simple, guys. Uh, and then the last tab here is contacts about CR CRB. They have um, an account you can create, and I guess you could message them through there, or you call them by phone. And if you have general questions, go ahead, give them a shout. Now guys, that's the end of this video. So I kind of just wanted to go through the, the new CRB because it's such an interesting topic right now. It's so confusing, it's so gray. And you know, it's a time where people need help. It, like maybe next time we can talk about how, how to apply. But um, if you have any questions, folks, feel free to comment a message that I'll comment something down below and I'll get, make sure to get back and answer all the questions. And again, if you're a new subscriber, you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the channel, join the motion. Thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, peace.